All right, on this rainy evening, we will play. Uh, now, this evening we're going to explore dreams as the doorway into metaphysics. Now, what is this? How am I going to explore it? I have a great next page here, which I'm sure you're going to enjoy. So make your notes of it very carefully. There it is. Now we're going to have to fill that page up. But it's a blank page to begin with. The meta kind of metaphysics we're going to explore has one principle. And that's the one we're going to go back to later, but let me first describe it. All right. You, have, you, you, didn't meet, you didn't miss anything. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A curious kind of metaphysics, but fundamental to this metaphysics is one idea. Okay. And the idea is that there is an unfoldment in stages, and the unfoldment is always based upon a mean analogy. A mean analogy proceeds two ways. It proceeds vertically either way and horizontally. Now, the particular orders that proceed this way are unity, intelligence, soul, soul and body. Now, let's take this idea first. Unity presupposes, in order for there to be unity, it presupposes there must be first a one. Because to talk about a unity means there must be the condition for a one to exist. Because if you have a one, then you can have the next step down, which is a oneness. If you have a one, and you have a oneness, and at this point I'm a, I am not making any difference between oneness and unity, Now, once you have a unity, a turning around, a unity, a dynamic unity, then you can talk about what it accomplishes. Of course, what it accomplishes is that there must be a procession and a return. If it's a dynamic unity, if there is a dynamic unity, then there must be a return to its origins. A procession from it. a procession from it, a turning around. Now, if there is a procession and a returning to the origin 
and it accomplishes that, then we have the unity. So then, we can say, if one, then a unity. Then we can say, if a unity, then they are, they are unities. If there is intelligence, there are intelligences, or a manifold. So therefore, we're going to call each one of these horizontal movements an order. An order. Therefore, these are the different kinds of orders. Now, if I say these are the different kinds of orders there are, I want to make another point about it. I want to say that in any order, the primary term in any order represents that order par excellence in the highest degree. So therefore, if uh, in any order, whatever it is, if there were in the physical world, oh, well, let me pull back from the physical world first. Uh, if there is such a thing as intelligence, then the first term in the intelligence would be intelligence par excellence and the most highest expression and the fullest expression if, of it. If there's the order of soul, then that first term must be the most fullest soul uh, which could show its excellence most fully. And then there can be others. And that's what I mean by a descending order and a horizontal order. And that's all. With that, we can forget about it entirely and proceed into the world of dreams. All right? Just two ideas. If there's a source and there are there is this development from it, it proceeds down, and we can make the mean analogy, by the way, uh, in a few moments, but essentially the mean analogy is going to be if there are two things which participate, that participation then can be expressed as a mean analogy. So therefore, in each of these, when I say there is an order, this would be A, these would be the mean terms, and the third then would be the extreme B, which then is capable of participating, and the same thing would move throughout. So then, let's see how we might be able to use this curious idea. From studying dreams, we will now then see what dynamics are involved in it, see what kind of a universe that presupposes, find those categories, put them back in what we just said, and develop it from there into what is a, will be a full dress metaphysics. So, any dreams? Did you bring one with you? One? All right. <laughs> Let's play. Can you give it aloud? Um, okay. Um. What I remember was I, I, I transcribed, I taped it, but the, what I remember recollecting it was um, I was going down um, a highway. And the highway was familiar. I, I had traveled it many times. And there was a turn in the highway, a curve. And at that curve was a um, corner. It actually went down the other way. It was kind of like going from the left this way. Yeah. And at that corner was a curve. And on that curve was a bus stop. And I was 
going across the street with a friend. The friend ran ahead and had seen a guy in a car. Had not? Had seen somebody. We were, we were mm -hmm. um, trying to get a ride to town. And we, um, she thought that maybe hitchhiking would be a good idea, and so this guy stopped. And at first I wasn't sure if that was a friend or not, or somebody safe. She appeared to know the person, and uh, they, she got in the car, and they drove a little ways around the corner of the curb. However, I kept walking, and uh, I came to the bus stop, and I noticed that um, she was in the car, and then I signaled to her that the bus was coming. We needed to take the bus. Um, Then uh, there was one bus that came by, but that was bus 36, and that was not the bus we wanted. That went by. Um, there was another bus we had to wait for. And then um, as, as we waited, uh, somehow we walked across the street. It was a, a huge street, and we walked across it. Um, and in so doing, there were these um, kids, two, two boys, on the other side, um, and they were, um, they were playing uh, with each other, they were brothers, and uh, I can't remember what they said, but one of them was, they were playing around and they were joking, and I was sitting there waiting, I think we had crossed on the other side to catch the bus going to town. Um, you crossed to the other street, side? Yeah, crossed the street, because I think the bus was going to go on the other side. Okay. And for some reason I thought it was number 29 or 25 we had to catch. And these boys were playing, but they said something, and I can't remember what they said. Um, but in their playing, they were playing in the ground, and they picked up, I saw that this kid had, they were malicious, uh, min mischievous kids, and uh, I had a feeling that they were going to do something that was not going to be nice. Um, and they did. They, the kid was playing in the ground and he came across one of those bugs called the child of the earth. And these are, or, or they're sometimes called potato bugs. Mm -hmm. And they're just horrible. They're just awful in my mind. And what he did was, I knew exactly what he was going to do. He was going to pick it up and he was going to put it on me. That's what, that was what he was going to do. And so, he did. He took it and he put it on my uh, finger, this the, the fourth finger, and it stayed. It, I couldn't shake it off. And uh, at first, I, it, just the fear of having it being put on my finger was just uh, awful. And uh, like all the anticipation, all the fears I'd had, just went by me. But once it was on my finger and I knew it was on there, it was like I, I couldn't have that fear anymore. It was like that was it. It was, I couldn't fear what it was going to be like because now I experienced it and that's exactly what it, you know, uh, that fear went away. I couldn't get it off. It wouldn't let go. And to shake it wasn't going to be sufficient. I, I had literally would have had to take my other hand and removed. And that in itself then brought up a whole other range of fears. Now I would have to pluck this thing off. <laughs> and uh, that's where it ended. That's where? That's all I remember. Good. <laughs> thank you. First, thank you. Now, a dream is a series of events and we try to separate them out. In each event, we want to see an action or a state. We want to see uh, the words, if any, 
all right, the logos, and we want to see a state of mind throughout. All right, so we just go back to it with that in mind. I don't have to ask any questions, but just imagine that we're asking it now, all right? Such as, what was it like with the friend? Hitchhiking, there was some worry about it, remember? Uh, in the beginning, I remember it as being very lush and green. That area was very lush. And it was coming down the hill. Mm -hmm. And the curve was very familiar. Mm -hmm. I yeah. had traveled it many times. Yeah, many times. All right. So we know the story then. She knew the driver of the car that came along. She got in? She went and Well, she the just door. went to the car. She she got it was like she was sitting there. She went in. She wasn't going to use him to go with us. It was just she kind of was visiting okay. inside the car. Yeah, but she didn't go, she didn't take the ride. No. Right. No. So she just went over. Right. And sat in and visited. Uh, just a visit. I didn't know the person. Yeah, yeah. In the car. Yeah. And then you both decided you waved to her and the bus was yeah. coming and 36 went by and, and then you saw the boys joking. Right. So we could then go back and get further information to make sure that in each scene we have an action, words, and state of mind. In every dream, you try to see whether or not you can see where a crisis is and how it was dealt with. You treat it as a story, an intelligible story, even if it's only one snapshot. All right? Would you agree there's a certain trip she's taking right, with a colleague? Right. There was certainly more to this, but I don't remember. All right. But this is the tail end. Well, what would be great to do is to go through this, go back, turn the tape on, and see what differences you yeah. find, and then deal with those differences. Mm -hmm. I will. Right. Would you agree uh, uh, your particular worry, all right, she didn't get into the car, and therefore you're still waiting for the bus. The 29 and 25 went by, not sure about that. but. Uh, you're watching these two boys, and now the drama shifts to the two boys while watching for the trip, mm -hmm. and this event takes place, doesn't it? Um, therefore, what we most need is to look at this sequence. So we go back to it and see whether we can bracket it in order to see the stages and the steps, all right? Picked up the child of the earth. It was awful. I mean, right. those creatures are very ugly in my mind. Yeah. Okay. Growing up, I used to be terrified when I used yeah. to dig in the ground and find them. Right. So we make it right in childhood, terrified of it. All right. Such What's interesting, though, is that you're seeing, aren't you? in that sense of being prophetic. You yeah. knew exactly what he was going to do. Right. Uh, could you describe that moment? It was... I knew what he was going to do, but I couldn't stop him, and nor could I get out of the situation. Okay, I mean, there was no way I could remove myself fast enough did you say you were paralyzed? No, I was just too close and, and very... He was right there. Like, to move away, he would have put it somewhere else. He yeah. still would have put it on me. Yeah. So you couldn't stop him or move away, so then you accepted the conditions as they were. Right. All right? That's a state of mind. So you couldn't stop him or move away. And we'll get more information on that. Since it's a state of mind, I'm going to kind of circle it. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Okay. Now, then he put it on you. He put it on your finger. 
That's an action. Right. And the way they were acting, I knew they were going to do it. Like I, it was like he when he found it, it was like oh, it was like a joy in his mind that oh, good, I know what I'm going to do with this. So he had a kind of a joy, see? Or a mischievous joy, you know, it's all goody. Right. <laughs> Mischief, he found something yeah. to do. Great, great, I don't know what great, to do this great. With this. <laughs> great. So we'll signify that as we did before. All right. He was awful. He put it on me. Yeah, on, my f on my fourth finger. That's it, see, there's the same. Right. And if you know what these bugs look like, they kind of grab. Like oh, stop. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. What kind of a grab is that, would you say? A full grab. Like what? Well, like they have all their legs around your finger. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm I'll I'll put it on you. Yeah. All right. That's the action. <laughs> oh, God, I hate it. <laughs> Sorry. I had the he put it on me. He did it. All right. And it clung. What was it? Come on, put words on it. Grab. Grab. Come on. Um, much like what you would imagine, like an opossum, you know, or some, some animal that grabs or can wrap their. Wrapped their, around. Finger around branch. Good. Hold on. Wrapped around. Mm. Good, 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 good. So that you literally couldn't shake it off because it was too. Right. Was it couldn't shake it off. Yeah, what's that like? See, that's the action. Couldn't shake it off. Well, he was attached. Pardon me? He was attached. Yes, that's true. What was it like? You couldn't shake it off. And there he is. He's attached. You couldn't shake it off. Well, I had to try another maneuver. To get him off would require force from another. Uh, not shaking wasn't going to release him. He mm -hmm. had to literally be pulled off. Yeah, and the state of mind you're in at that time is you said it was. Well, I'm going through awful, a lot right? of feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One is number one, what it's like to be had the thing knowing it's going to be put on you. That's right. That's one level. Right. Then once it's on there, I, I, kind of went through several stages like. Oh, what is this like? Oh, well, this isn't as bad as I thought it would yeah, be. Well, it's it's all my imagination and fears. Yeah, okay, but at first, you, I want to see whether I have it right, all right? You couldn't shake it. Right. it was, this, somehow all your fears came forth, right? It was awful, is the way you described it. Mm -hmm. Right? And then there was the transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So here we are with this awful, right? When, awful. Being, when I knew it was going to be put on me. Yeah. Well. Especially when I knew it was going to be put yeah. on me. See, what I'm interested in seeing whether I can match is this, these words, this idea to the event. Mm -hmm. All right? That's all. See, that's, see, I have two places I can put that. Well, it certainly was Or awful. we can make it a transition. That's equally true. Oh, I see. Awful. Um, all your fear, remember all the fears? Those had. were primarily at the time when they were going to put it on me. All the fears that came up, what it was like to imagine what it was going to be okay. like to have that even close to me. All right. Then I don't want, don't want this. I want this, this now is the action. All right. So this is really awful. Uh, all the fears, facing all the old fears, right? That's here. That's the state. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. That helpful? All right. Now it's on. You couldn't shake it off. Right. Okay. You, right. Something curious then happens, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? Now here we have it in these words. Let me give you back the words and see whether you can put the state of mind on it. He said, you couldn't have the fear of something because it was there. Right. I mean, I noticed... Uh, like, I you can't fear something happening if it hadn't happened, but it happened, you can't fear it, is what you're saying. Right. right? So, 
you couldn't have a fear about something if in fact now you're facing that very thing because it's present before you. It's on me. It's on you. Yeah. The very fear of ever having those things even touch me. I mean, now it's happened. Okay, see, so the fear of it ever touching you. Now it's there. Yeah. And you knew it. Oh yeah. Right? So you couldn't have the fear, so you experienced something, right, right. at that moment, right? What was it you experienced? What well, was it? Kind of a um, it was a strange feeling. It was like I don't know, it was like, my, like something in my stomach just said, well, it's not that bad. Go ahead. It's not as bad as your fears thought. It would right, be. it's not as bad as you feared. So right? It was like a gasp. It was almost like a gasp to see, recognize that it, I exper you know, what I experienced with, didn't really happen. Yeah. But then what was it like? at this moment. I mean, it's not my fears, so what is it like? What was that? What, what, no. what is it? Yeah, how does it feel now? I mean, you, you first of all, you didn't experience what you thought it would, so now how does it feel? And I noticed it wasn't that bad. Yeah, go ahead. All right. But I would go slight, I would go in and out. Okay. Of the fear, like, oh God, you know, it's still on, and, I was, and now I'm going to have to pluck it off, and, and the, that brought on another set of feelings, like, oh God, what am I gonna, how am I going to do that? See, that's a future. Uh -huh. Now I'll have to get it off. Pluck it off. Pluck it off. That means I have to use another means other than shaking it off. And that, I, that meant for me to use my other hand, which means I would have had to touch it grab it myself, which means I would even be more in contact with it. Mm-hmm. 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 <clears throat> I'd have to remove it with my other hand. Mm-hmm. Right? And more sensitively with my left hand, which in my mind was more sensitive to feeling the, the possibility, what it, what its back felt like. Now I, I know what its grip, you know, what its legs feel like. Now I'm going to have to feel its body. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's <very> interesting. <laughs> good, 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 good. Right now, there you see. That's the event. Go ahead and. Well, I that was. Um, that was what I had to do. I just that was left. I was left with that. Look here. What's that like? Well, that, I have to do it. Well, I I huh? was going back and forth, thinking in my mind maybe it's not as would be as bad because I just experienced you know it was kind of like I just experienced something that was not as bad as I thought it would be. So now I'm going to have to do something I have a fear of doing. And yet, I have just experienced something I didn't fear. Or I had all these fears that didn't happen. The fears, the fears didn't happen. That's a good way of putting it. And what does that do to your decision well, it, that I have to do it? What's that like? Well, it lessens the fears. It didn't take them. It, it, I still had fears, but it was like I felt like I, there was a possibility. Uh, that there, that there wouldn't, it wouldn't be what I think it would be like. Although it didn't remove fears at that point. I mean, it was like I started over again and had fears about what it was going to be like pulling it off. Yeah. So you have two different, you have two different fears. You have right. the earlier fear, and now this new one. Right. And we're looking for a couple of words that might describe that different state of mind, because. Now I, I have to do it, right? 
the old fears didn't happen. So what kind of a statement are you making to yourself there? Like that could be said in a variety of ways, couldn't it? I have to do it. Think of all the different states of mind you could say something like that. More, it was more, um, could be done uh, matter, more of a matter of fact way. Mm -hmm. not, not really, but more so. Like if not bothered, more matter of fact, more, um, oh, this is just a, a, you know, something and I can just remove it. It, it, it didn't have a, a, as much a More in that direction. Right, right. more so. More yeah. so. More so. Right, 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 right. Okay. When what you mean by more so what? Well, I'm it's not. I'm not <laughs> affected by it. You're not affected by it. Right. Well, as yeah, much. Yeah. Doesn't mean it was gone. It was just not as. It's. You didn't do it like matter of factly. It was just more like a matter of fact. More. So. More so, and that moving in that direction. Moving in that direction. Fine. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Okay. Now we pulled out of here the sequence. That's what we've done. And we've got states of mind now. Uh, all right, okay. Now we go back into the dream. All right, now we go back into the dream. Um, notice how it starts off lush, green. Right. How are you with the uh, friend? Well, initially I thought I was alone, but then mm -hmm. she comes into the scene. Mm -hmm. And I don't really, it was like, we were in college or something. Okay. I, we were students. Students, college okay. students. Right, okay. And, uh, And I was looking forward to, I enjoyed crossing the lawns, crossing mm -hmm. this huge hill, mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. around the curve. Mm -hmm. We're not upset by the bus going by? No, I was just, I was just mistaken. I thought I mistaken. was anticipating it and yeah. it was the wrong one, mm -hmm. so it was mm -hmm. fine. Actually, mm -hmm. we got to spend more time there. Yeah, and spending more time there was like what? It was nice. I liked that place, the oh. curve in that area. Right. Nice place. All right, that's a state of mind, see? Nice place, state of mind. All right. And um, now, this scene, all right, now you're watching the two boys joking. Yeah, I wish I knew what they said. I can't remember. Okay, they said something. We don't have that. Mm -hmm. But he's in a joyous state. He's got joy. mischief yeah. on his mind. Mischievous joy. Mischievous, all right. <laughs> like, now, oh, goody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But Relentless you, goody. Relentless, all yes, right. Yes, he wasn't going to give up. Okay. You knew exactly, what, yeah. right? You knew exactly. That's real interesting seeing going on. All right. And it put you in this, then in this sequence. So I'm interested in this knowing. Right, I knew exactly what was going to take place. All right, could you give me a moment of that? Go back into that. He picked up a child of the earth. Well, when I saw him dig at it, he dug it up. You know, it was like he was playing in the, in the grass and he dug it up. What is the difference between pick it up and dug it up? Well, he dug it up and then he picked it up. Yeah, okay, I mean, any manner or style or? Well, when he saw it, it was like an automatic thought in his head connected with I knew with mine. I knew exactly what he was going to do. Saw it. He saw it. Right. And knew what he was going to do. Right. And I knew what he was going to do. Oh, yeah. As soon as he saw it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was his state of mind before. Yeah. Okay. Now, a little more care. All right. Same thing now. I'm going to see if we can narrow it down. All right. Now. Uh, just represent the dream. Don't let my, uh, my emphasis accent any particular part of it. But I'm interested in, just pick it up, <laughs> picking up that word, 
in that scene where the boy is working in the earth. All right, I'm, I'm going to be careful about seeing the moment of your seeing. All right, so go ahead. There he is. Well, I, I know I'm watching and I'm listening. They have just finished a word, mm -hmm. and I'm watching mm -hmm. what they're doing. And they have a certain attitude. Mm -hmm. um, and as he, when he found, he, he was, he went to dig it, he went to dig in the ground, and he saw this bug, he saw it. And I could see he saw it. Thank you. I could see he saw it. Then you're looking at him, you're not looking at the child of the earth. You're judging him well, and his attitude. I saw the child of the earth. Right. And I, I saw him, and I knew exactly what he was going to do with it, oh, okay. based on what I saw oh. him do before. No, oh, okay. I've seen him before. Then. Oh. I've seen the, seen the, how they were, the state of mind they were in. Thank you. You see, you're judging states of mind. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Yes. You're judging I saw states state of, of mind. mind. You're judging I knew exactly states of mind. Exactly what he was going to do with it. He so could. Right. You knew this person from before then. Well, no, he was a little boy. I just was watching how he was playing. And there was something in what he said, oh. what he said, fine, fine. whatever that was, I could tell that too. So therefore, you're judging an attitude, right. and you're judging his face, as it were, right? Right. Right, his attitude. Mm -hmm. This is a seeing, then. Good. Right. It's not associating with the object, it's the kid. So it's on the basis right. of that. Right, he didn't have to. He didn't have to. No. Right, right. It's because of that that you knew exactly what he was going to do. Right. Thank you. The attitude. Thank you. Right, right, right. <coughs> so it, it isn't simply, well, you knew exactly what was going to happen. Oh, no, no, no. You saw a state of mind, an attitude, and on the basis of that, you knew exactly what was going to happen. Therefore, you're judging states of mind very accurately. Yes. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying, yes. Yeah. That's an interesting... Uh, kind of saying, what's that like? Action, words, state of mind, always. Action, state of mind, words. Right. What's that like? Mm. See, I well, knew exactly. On, on one level, it's good. Yeah, okay. I mean, Great. I don't have yeah. a problem. It would be nice to, to be able to but the situation was It would be nice to be able to, to see that clearly and always. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Right. All right. I mean, yeah, that. Then you appreciate that kind of thing. Wow, right? So while you're doing it you're going <whistles> Okay, good. I just good. Didn't good. particularly like <laughs> right? this one. Yeah, all right. But but the seeing yeah. is a uh, what? Um it was it was um It's accurate. It was good. Okay. Good. Accurate. Good. Good. What day was this dream? What day was it? Um, it was Sunday. Sunday? Saturday or Sunday? Saturday, Sunday? Mm -hmm. Did I do it? I can't remember. This is Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in knowing whether this sequence that we have here in any way reflected something that went on the, the day before because uh, this is the style of a dream that comes out of that experience mm -hmm. well you know I it's interesting I, I thought of um, I I, I don't quite know if this, uh, I'll tell you, I, yeah. in the, I had gone to a Zen retreat this week, and um, th I think this was on Sunday night. I mm -hmm. came home and I recalled certain kinds of situations that occurred, but after I had this dream, I noticed that I went about the house and then suddenly 
I was compelled, I, I, I went, and I started recalling the different times I saw the Satan. Like literally, I felt compelled to do that. That's one of the people there. Yeah. Okay, one go of ahead. The teachers. Go ahead. And I, and for some reason, it was like I don't know if this. It was like the dream was kind of like uh, this is how I like. I moved in, and, and after I recalled that, it was like a release of of remembering what had gone on in those sessions. Mm, 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 mm. More accurately than I had recalled them earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And after I did that, I felt... Uh, noticeably relieved from this dream for some reason. The dream didn't leave me until then. Like literally the dream bugged me. <laughs> yeah, yes, the dream bugged you. I'm glad you used that. Because <laughs> we can be sure this dream bugged you. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well, let's go back over it, all right? Okay. You were involved yeah, with it. Was also the recollection of the evening before, which there were certain questions being asked of me that buzzed me <laughs> to recall. And that was in some way relentless, too. That was what? Relentless. <laughs> relentless questioning. Yeah. Right? Go ahead. They wouldn't let go. <laughs> ah. More? That's good. Now, can can I explore this? Would you mind exploring this? No. Because I have to ask that before no. we go further. Um, now, what what is it that's going on? All right. Relentless. The questions. Well, there was questions about what it was that I had experienced in the type of experiences I had during the session. By this teacher? Right. No, uh, not by that uh, teacher. By someone after. So, okay, this will be someone after. After, right. The teacher was, let's see, there's two parts. One was the night before, after I got back from the session. Mm -hmm. There was mm -hmm. relentless questioning. Then, then I had the dream, and then after the, the dream, I went in and recalled what the actual, what I recalled to be more of the details more accurate details of the actual encounters I had with the teacher at the session. There were two encounters. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Both bugged me. Well, talk about what bugged you. Here. Bug, about yeah. the rec uh, well, no, just I'm saying that when I had the dream, I was bugged by the fact that I didn't recall all the parts. And so when I started recollecting, it was like I was releasing myself from that. And so the recollection was a helped it helped you release myself released yourself right and this was a process uh -huh. right mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and I noticed that in the recollection there was some s significant things that were I had mentioned the night before in the as they were asking me questions okay you hadn't mentioned before right. to this person to, to the, someone the group of people that after Okay, I can easily draw a group. Right. And also, it gave me an insight into what I didn't tell the teacher. Mm. Mm. Both, actually. Both the group and the, and the teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so through and this... And how much I left out, actually. Yeah. No. Yeah, you, you, that comes up again several times, doesn't it? How much in, I left yeah, well, in the story. Right? Oh, yes, excuse me. Right? Would you agree it came up when you're talking to this group? Right. Right? That's the first time, right? Mm -hmm. And then it came up 
with the teacher. Mm -hmm. right? True. Second time. And that did that then drive you to the recollection? You started recollecting? Um, I just want to get the sequence correct to see it go in a sequence. The sequence was that I recollected the night after I got back. And then I had the dream. And that in kind of compelled me to recollect about mm -hmm. my experiences with the teacher. That's right. So the dream recollection, right? brought you to uh, reflect Again, on, the on the episode with the teacher. Right. And that's a other that's a, another recollection, mm -hmm. right? And as you were doing this, you came to the realization of how much you had left out. Right? So it's one, two, the dream recollection. Right? And then three with the teacher. Right? And then four. realization of how much you had left out. There was, oh. however, come, as I remember, however, um, although I left out a lot, in the, in the questioning afterwards... Uh, stage uh, one? Stage one. Mm -hmm. There was something that was relentless, and that was a particular kind of experience I had that they would not let go of talking about. Which really bothered me because I didn't understand it in, in many levels. But you know, I, as they talked about it, I thought, no, they would not let go of talking X, about right, right? Mm -hmm. which is an experience that you had, right? And they ri they wanted you to talk about that, right? Right? And they wouldn't let go of that subject, right? That's true. And that had an effect on you. It did. Right? Like what? Um, like, uh, like a grabbing of the chest or grabbing of the throat. Or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, they were relentless and... It was scary. Not scary, scary, but it was fearful. Fearful, right? Scary is different than fearful. Because... I didn't want to assume something I, that I... I was real care trying to be careful. I didn't want to assume something that wasn't real. Thank you. So, um. This is a success, isn't it, the dream? Well, yeah, on one level it is, because I was experiencing a lot of fears and discovered that it wasn't, the fears were gone when, yeah. when I actually felt it. Yeah. So in that sense, how was he functioning, the boy? Well. <laughs> Come on, how was he functioning? <laughs> oh, brat. <laughs> He's a brat. He That's may what be. He was. He's a brat. He's a brat. He How was the brat functioning? <laughs> like glue. Like <laughs> glue. Relentless. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. That you could He was not going to give up. He wasn't going to give up. <laughs> right. That's a, You put it very well, didn't you? You couldn't stop him. You no. couldn't move away. No. No. Right. And as a result of that, you had to then. That's right, your fears. Hmm. So how was he functioning then? Like a bear trap. A bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> and what was he trapping? <laughs> My fears. Your fears. And you then, how was, what name do you give a person who is doing that? A what? bear trapper. A bear, all right, I'll take a bear trapper. All right. A fear trapper? A fear trapper. <laughs> 
A fear trapper. Fear trapper. That's different than a bear trapper. Yes. Fear trappers are very interesting, right? <laughs> All right. No. What do they call those uh, dream catchers? <laughs> no. Dream catcher. All right. Fear. Right. Fear, fear catcher. Right. And you could spot immediately what he was going to do with it. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 It's the attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And. Uh, Can I ask a question? That please. What, was, what does the number four mean? See the fourth finger. You talked about the fourth okay. finger. Okay. okay. Let me hold that because you're absolutely right, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm leaving it alone. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. Did you hear that? Hmm. <laughs> so look here. As you look at the dream, right? You reflected on it, right? People were relentlessly pursuing X. <laughs> go on, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just made, I don't know. It was just a curious, but what triggered the initial experience was a recollection of the argument in the Republic dealing with the three fingers. <laughs> you know, and the middle finger was the puzzle that caused one to determine whether the soul would be one, whether the soul would know whether there was one or two things it was looking at. Mm -hmm. And then it leads the questioner to mm -hmm. just contemplate what it's experiencing. Because it's a question of this is, this at the same time, it's the same finger. <laughs> oh, weird. The same finger is both small and large. Um, what's the fourth finger? Fourth finger on the right hand. I don't, I don't know. Just I don't know. I know on the left hand it's a wedding finger, but this is the right hand. Well, <laughs> what would be the fourth finger? You did say it was the fourth finger. It was the fourth finger. It was the. And in terms finger. of the example you're using, which is the fourth finger? This one. That's the right. It's and the that's one. the one. It's yeah. It's the one that would cause somebody to reflect. Reflect. That's the finger that would cause one to reflect. Yes, that's <laughs> true. And he put the bug on that fourth <laughs> finger. He bugged you with the fourth finger. And that's the great riddle in the Republic. Yeah. Isn't that charming? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Which leads the question oh. to what after all is the one in itself. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. 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 Huh. Yeah. Hmm. Wondered about why it was the fourth finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah. And uh now look here, there's a curiosity here that we need to look at. Now. All right, all right. You have to deal with it. So you have to deal with it with what? Now, we're going to go for the state of mind when we push the questions. You always go to the state of mind to push the questions, all right? That's the vocabulary you need for exploring the dream. Say, so, uh, well, what do you need then? The uh, to get the bug off? I needed to use what? My other hand. My left hand. Okay, now put in its place what the left hand meant to you, remember? Oh, yes, it's much more sensitive to feeling. That's and, right. And okay. sensation. So then to deal with this, you have to deal with something more sensitive. More sensitive, right? Oh, yeah. Very right. So the way to deal with this bug on the fourth finger is you have to now be more, you have to use something more sensitive to it, which is the left hand, right? Go ahead. Yeah, like it was like the right hand was, it, mm -hmm. it I don't know, it seemed like more callous. Yeah, and good, good, hard, more callous. Take, maybe take or mm -hmm. endure mm -hmm. what comes along a little mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. But this left hand was more sensitive mm -hmm. and needed and uh, was much more sensitive to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to have to pluck it off, right? From the top of it. From the and top of it. Yeah, it meant that I had to grab the whole body now. Right. And You'd have to grab the whole thing the now. Whole Whatever it is, you have to grab the whole thing right. now. Go ahead. And pull it off without mm -hmm. breaking any part of it. So the Oh. If it still attached, you didn't want to leave any part. You had mm -hmm. to pull it off. Whole. Whole. That's right. Ah, 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 ah. 
<laughs> right, right. You want to leave it late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, okay, all right. So that meant that the way you handled it, it would, you know, you'd have to know how to handle it. You'd have to know how to handle it. See the way you're talking grab about it? it. You have to grab it in a certain way to make sure you get the whole of it, right. all of it. And that was the dreadful thing that you wanted to deal with. That was and now you saw a way that you were, now I had to do it. I have to do it. And now it's more of a matter of fact of dealing with it. Yeah, there was less fear in, in like if I could do it this with this, I can mm -hmm. handle the fears on this. There's a possibility that maybe the fears, mm -hmm. the fears that I had would not be what I thought they would be. So it was like that transition. Mm -hmm. Although it was mm -hmm. still more sensitive, I had mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. fear. Yeah, and all the things you had feared would happen didn't happen. No, and so that gives you a certain level of courage. courage. <laughs> I'd say courage. Courage. Sure, I'll take it. Courage. It takes. I mean, because <laughs> it allowed you to come to it with more what? Courage. courage right. For sure. Good. Good. I mean, it took a lot of guts to just sit there and watch this kid do this. Right. It, you're coming up then with a, an unusual state of mind of yeah. courage. I would right? say so. Yeah. 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 And now you can do it with that courage. Well, I certainly had more of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or actually, I didn't have any in the beginning. Yeah, not in the beginning, <laughs> right, 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 no, right. I had a little more. Right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's an interesting dream. Um, what do you think now of your recollection of the day before, the two days before that you gave us? All right. Let's do it together, All right? Well, it looks like I worked through something. Yes, yeah. in the dream. And that the dream is letting me know that I worked through something that maybe I didn't realize I did. That's right, sure. because then when you recollected the dream, go ahead. And then? There was a release, somewhat of a release. Go ahead. And after that, I recollected the weekend. Then you were the able week. now to reflect on the whole week, right? Or the episodes of the teacher. Actually. Right, right, right. What's the just offhand? What's the significance of that now that you're able to reflect on the episode of the teacher? Well, as I said, I I saw how much I had left out, giving him an idea. Like I I talked to him about what I I had experienced. But I didn't demonstrate to him what I had seen. If I make myself yes, clear. that's correct. Okay. Now, just to help us, what grade would you give for yourself in that episode with the teacher? O, D. A C. Okay. I said D. D. Yeah, I said yeah. I I, I thought All right. D. Okay, that's fair. All right. So you were holding back something, uh, yeah, right? A lot. And now you went through this reflection, the episode with the teacher, right? And you saw what you had left out. Yeah. And now you could face what you had left out. Yeah. Yeah, I did face what I had left out. Ah, right. What was that like, facing what you left out? Um, well, it was good on one level because I was happy that I could remember more accurately, which meant that um, there was actually much more you could recover, recover, not just remember, right? You recovered what you lost, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And I saw that the experiences I had were richer ah. than my judgment at the time when I presented it to him. Because you had... I had a negative, more negative opinion of You me. left out. Yeah, and you had a negative opinion. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't give him a lot. Yeah. By the way, had you given him the full statement, go from a D to an A? Oh, uh, well, I would be a different, I would, have I would have been in a different place with him and also with myself. Ah, ah, ah. He would have had to not just heard about what I was doing, 
but actually I would have brought him to see that. You would have let him see where you were. Right, and then I could demonstrate. And then demonstrate it. Yeah, right. that would be like the sensitive hand. That would be That's like the, the sensitive hand, that good. Would be more That's sensitive. the sensitive hand, yeah. 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 Left hand. Yeah. See this circle? Didn't want to assume something that wasn't real. Yeah. Well, that was my feelings through the teacher, through, it, through the whole week. That was the what? That was a problem. Oh, the fear. That's the fear, yeah. right? There's the fear. Well, it's a problem. <laughs> right? Because it's not true. It's not true. You don't want to assume something, right? This whole idea now is, is, is questioned because this was your fear. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to fear it. You saw there was no need to fear it. Ah! Yeah, because mm. in my recollection the next day, Mike's, mm -hmm. I, my the experiences were not that were not as negative as I, in my own mind at the time, presented to myself. No, yeah, it was negative because this is the belief you had. Right, I agree. That's true. Right, this is right. Uh, this may come from someone else. That's a charge. Hey, you're assuming something that isn't real. You're making it up. That may be, in fact, some slogan that played some role in your whole life. A charge against you. You make things up. Mm -hmm. Then how can you trust something good? And you dealt with that fear. <clears throat> oh, interesting. Pardon me? Yeah. Like, in part, I did. To some degree, I did. Yeah, go ahead. What other? In part. Go ahead, keep going. Well, I, uh, I mean, obviously, I didn't do it with the teacher or with the evening before. Mm -hmm. um, but in the next morning, mm -hmm. um, I saw that I had assumed something mm -hmm. that actually wasn't real. That, that I saw that. that I had assumed that um, my experience was, um, I, was something that was not worth re reflecting on and uh, wasn't real and mm -hmm. wasn't that significant. Right. You were playing a Roche against yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. That's true. And it, what did you do with them? Your own Roche. Well, the next day I saw that it well, wasn't well, I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it in the, the yeah, words, okay. but I did see that um, I, I, I had done some work that would have been good for him to have seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a bit, there was more to the in, encounters uh, and to have pushed it further with him would have, I think, um, to the degree I understood what was happening uh, would have helped him too. Would and have helped him well. too. And myself. And you. Yeah, because the whole purpose of going to him was to reveal mm -hmm. uh, it, my state at the moment as best I could. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't do that yeah. just fully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, all right, you have the weekend or that period of time. Right. All right. These people talk to you about this. They were relentless. Right. Yeah. Uh, you then had the dream, you recollected the dream, that release released you somewhat, right? It now allowed you to recall the episode with the teacher, mm -hmm. and you recognized what you had left out. Mm -hmm. You actually recovered something that wasn't in, available to you. The right. dream opened oh, up. That's true. Look here. Your reflection on the dream, your reflection on the dream, recovered something very significant. The dream got you to reflect on it because it awakened all your ancient fears. Look at that, see? Look at all. Isn't that a great way to have expressed it? Uh -huh. Right? <laughs> it was awful. All of my old fears, that's what it said, they came together. So the intensity I of that dream... Nothing could be worse. Nothing could be worse. I'd rather right? die in a dream than face right. it. So with that uh -huh. intensity of the dream, you had to reflect on it. <laughs> right? It shook you and said, Hey! That was awful. 
And it was wonderful that you did reflect on that dream because you then could recover your own experience. Mm -hmm. And ironically, even more so now because I had to put the idea of the Republic in there. Ah, and that plays a major role in... Well, that's what precipitated the actual events. Oh, wonderful. The, the actual experiences ah. that I told ah. the teacher. Then that precipitated the four, right? The, the event itself. Right. So that everybody was relentless in talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So then you recovered also what set it in. I pulled together uh, a great work, the Republic, into your own reflections and meditations. Ah, I see. Now, what can we say about the dream? What can we say about the nature of dreams? And notice there's very, do you stay with the dream? We only have very simple principles. Three things, you try to look at each event, try to find the action in it whatever words are in it, states of mind. We went through it and structured it out this way. We went back to get more details wherever we could to purify it. We asked, say, there's something about this that looks like it may have occurred recently. You got this episode, right? caused us then to go through this, and that allowed us to make all kinds of connections, did it not? Now, Thing. Please. Even in the relentless discussion, there was a release of, uh, there was courage to go through that. Mm. Mm. So in that sense, um, you were already showing courage yeah, here to, for you. Yes, even that's all right. To this degree of revealing what I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a growth of courage, isn't there? And yeah. Integrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. Does that mean then that there is something that is awake in our waking world that was aware of the period of time of your study, was aware of what you went through in your Buddhist retreat, right? was aware of the fact that at Sunday when you came back these people sat around and put you through this, mm -hmm. was aware of the state of mind that you were in, and could express it as a relentless, they wouldn't let go, they were bugging you as you said, mm -hmm. right? That led you into a certain state of mind where you had this dream, all right? You went back, you had to reflect on it because of its intensity, right? And reflecting on the dream, it released somewhat what was going on. It then allowed you to reflect on the episode with the teacher, right? And that was very valuable. So look here. How is the dream functioning then? Then there's something awake in our waking world which knows so well and could represent this fear you have or this thing here, which is you should never assume something that isn't real, right? Don't make believe or something like that. I imagine it may take them some kind of form like that, right? And, and look here, right? The fear is so intense, so that charge is so intense, it could take on this character oh, yeah. from your own personal experience. So it reached back into your own mind, right? Past experience and pulled out the one thing that could represent all of that in terms of the child of the earth, right? And then in a remarkable way, notice now what's now going to be fun if we can get it. Could you tell us about the boy? No, I know. Anything about the boy? No, no. Physically, anything about the boy? Mm, they were too young, but not too young. They were, must have been about, I don't know, I think one was 10 and the other was 11. They were brothers. Okay, brothers. And it was the younger of the brothers. That was doing it. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> and the other one was certainly not going to stop his brother. Not going to stop the brother. They were in it together. Absolutely. Bugging him. <laughs> right. That's for were sure. there any uh, relative people that were like brothers up there in that scene? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good. Father and son. Ah. Ah. Close to the same age. <laughs> Close to the same age. Okay. Now look. See. <laughs> like ironic sense. Yeah, okay, then see, is it not the case, if we can deal with that, 
that the dream, the master, whatever produced this dream, is so skillful that it could pick out these things in your past, characterize the event that took place Sunday. Perhaps two of the provocative people in this group that were bugging you could be represented as up to mischief, yep. and you knew exactly where it was going. Yep. Yeah, that's true. And then your dream then is showing you something very significant which is what you said so beautifully when you said, I remember, perhaps you can say it again, I won't repeat it. What is it you saw when you finally had to deal with your fear when the child of the earth got on the finger? I, I couldn't have the fears. Couldn't have the fears. You say, yeah, it's on, there it is, right? <laughs> right, it's over. It's over. So your mind is telling you, the dream master, whatever is master, the master of the dream, has been able to bring that to your attention most vividly from your own experience and represent it in this way that represents the whole dynamics of what goes on in your own interior psychic life and shows you something that you didn't know you didn't need or didn't have or don't no longer have to worry and fear about. Yeah. You could then, thank goodness it was intense enough, Right? So would you agree, it turned you around and made you focus on yourself? Right? That's what it did. Yeah, did. that's true. Right? Did it help? Oh, yeah. Right? It's a, and what kind of help would you see? Is that moving in the direction, I'm going to use some words, and they're going to be important. See, there's a turning about here. Right. Uh, now, I'm going to go for, for several turns, all right? This is moving in a direction that is helpful to you psychically in your own development, isn't it? Yes. And to that degree, it's perfecting, isn't it? Yes. It's a perfecting force. All right. All right. So it's a turning about, it's a protecting. Now, that gives you courage to go ahead. Right, it, and face the next, next level. The next right. level, right, and pre presents you with a certain kind of courage, a yeah. stance, right? Yeah. That's a protection. That's true. Right? Yeah. There's a protection in that. That's right. right. Yeah, there was right. a greater. Right. Right. right, right, right. And would you not agree what it's doing through it all, right, and it's perfecting, and it's protecting, it's it's preserving the better. It's preserving the better part of you, the integrity of yourself. Uh -huh. Right? You emerge much better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 By the way, did it have the capability of? Uh, now try this. See? Remember how you were at first? Ah, you knew the. Right? It was familiar. It was familiar. It was pleasant. It was an, a lush greenery. I'm after one word. All right? I'll tell you the word. Vitality. Right? What was it like here? What was it like in the end? Um, if you could have a scale of vitality, all right? Where would you put this scene at the curve? Let us say it's here. Well, As you went through this, then I got closer to the problem. Got closer to the problem. In the beginning, it was like I saw the problem was with the other person. She mm -hmm. was going off, and I had yeah. already decided I'm going to take the bus. Yeah. So I wasn't involved as much. Mm -hmm. well, now it's mine. Let's now see whether we can now use what we have here and what we've developed in a new language. All right. Here's the language. Nothing. That was. It. All right. All set. Here we go. Now, each one of these things is an excellence. Now, I'm going to jump metaphysically here for a moment, all right? I'm in Greek metaphysics. Every God is a unifying excellence. A unifying excellence has power, exists, has power. Therefore, it gains the name of, of a deity. All right. So, would you agree that this turning about, the protecting, the, the perfecting, the protecting, or the shielding, uh, 
the vitality did something. It brought about a greater unification, and it's moving as an excellence. Each one of these is an excellence. You see, each excellence, right, each is distinguished, each, each God or each excellence is distinguished by its function. Together, they render all things good. Now look here, let's see if I can make that. Right. Now we're going to go, this is the big statement, I'm going to see whether I can make sense of this statement with you. All right. If there is a good, then there must be a goodness. Remember what we did before? If there is a goodness, there must be various kinds of goodnesses. Each one of these has a unifying quality to it because each one of these can have a particular function that accents the very nature of goodness. That's the individuation of goodness. Now notice the terms, stay there. All right. Perfecting, preserving, shielding from harm. It has a purging, a purifying effect, a purified from the old fears. It's a purgation, isn't it? Right. It's a turning about. It's a vitalizing. These are each a kind of good. They're a good, a goodness, each one. Together, each is a particular good. But the sum of these, the sum of these, one, two, three, four, five. All right, shielding and perfecting should be the same, by the way. Uh, all right, vitalizing. All together, that's goodness. Those are the qualities. If you say something has goodness to it, you can say, wait a minute, if it has goodness, then is there something being perf perfected? Is the thing that's being perfected, is it preserving that perfection? Is it capable of shielding from harm? Is it a purifying? Does it get rid of something and bring about some goodness? Is it a result of turning about? Turning about, yes. Does it release an energy so that you can go on to the next step? Yes, if those things are there, if each particular is there, then the sum of them is what we call the first principle, goodness. Now, therefore, each of these unifying things, each of these is an excellence, see? Each one of these is an excellence. Because when it's present in man, it brings about a good for him, her, right? Each is a particular kind of good psychic good. The sum, first principle, goodness. Now, look here. The, pe the, pe the peculiar mark of intelligence is to know these existences. What do we mean by the existences? Those very things we just named. What are they? Come on. Perfecting, preserving, right? Purifying, three Ps, and? Turning about. Turning about. Vitalizing, shielding. shielding from harm, which is another form of protecting, so it's actually five. All right? Now, to know these existences, to know these existences means to experience them. That's the particular mark of intelligence. Right? You want to know, you want to experience these things in your life because it has a unifying effect, it brings about a higher degree of excellence in your own psyche or soul. Now, the peculiar mark of your, our intelligence is to know these existences, to experience them, right? To know, to experience, to enter into union with them, and to have Right? And what you want? Have its perfection in intellectual acts because each of these things, would you not agree? Curiously enough, is an intellectual act. You had to face it with your mind, intelligent act. You went through an intelligent act. You had to call upon each of these things. Each of these things is an evidence. They're brought together. That bringing it together is a justification for us to say that was good. Now, forced me to have to participate on a level that I couldn't participate, to, to have to participate more. 
He, and what's so what's so good about participating more? Um, it would cause me to face the fears that I have about participating more. That's true, but that's negatively. Take the positive oh, now. What's the main experience? What's it like? Is there, is there a positive side? Is that experience you were talking about, the X, it's rather good. interesting? It's good. Well, thank you. Yeah. It was what kind of an experience? It's good. Thank you. Good, good, good. Very good. Thank you. Right, right. Look here now. See, um, communication, see, this, this communicating. We're communicating tonight. You're communicating with you. Your dream is communicating to you. You're reflecting on your dream. That's all communication. Communication and fulfillment comes about by a union between the things fulfilled and the principles prior to them. What does that mean? See, Our communication and fulfillment, this is what we're doing, comes about by a union. A union between those things, which we just mentioned, and the principles that are prior to them. The principle that is prior to them is goodness. Ah, good. Now, listen, you're doing it through the mind, intelligence. You know what? That union that you experience is what the intelligence imitates in identifying with its object. That's, that's rather complex, but let me put it in another way, see? There's something higher, there's something higher than intelligence and the intelligence actually imitates in identifying with its object that next thing that we want to look at. It's something higher than intelligence. Now, intelligence, in the way in which we're using the word, all right, has three factors to it, all right? It exists, all right? It is something that you can participate in. You participated in your dream. The dream master gave you the dream. Right? It is a production of the intelligence. But there's something that's driving the intelligence. You see, there's something driving the intelligence, and that's beyond the intelligence. And what is that that's driving the intelligence? because that's what in intelligence imitates in this very process because you reached a union. Well, what is that? Ah, that's where we're going. So let's go right here first. Right. The thing that's higher than the intelligence is providence. That's a Greek concept. Let's not use any other concept for it. Maybe we even shouldn't use the, that English word. Now, this is what I want to say for a few minutes about divine providence. We're used to the idea that it transcends beings, God's providence. This is a different kind of providence. Be well, look here, because uh, I, uh, here, uh, yeah, let me go here first. What is providence? Let's just do that Greek, Greek idea of providence. The bestowal of good things upon the beings which are its objects. Take our dream. Would you agree this dream was a, had good, it's a goodness, right? The bestowal of good things upon the beings which are its objects. The dream master is bestowing this upon you, right? It bestows good things. We could represent them by those five ideas, couldn't we? And helps you bring a more fulfilled life. It brings about a higher degree of excellence and allows you to now participate on a higher, more meaningful level of existence, right? That is the distinctive character of providence. That's what it means. That's what providence really means. See, providence is pronoia. Pronoia, before intelligence. Pronoia is, is an activity prior to intelligence. It leads the intelligence. It leads the intelligence because with all of these great five things, which we're calling entities for the moment, right? It then, the pr providence then is an activity prior to the intelligence. Since intelligence is, a pardon me, uh, 
uh, I jumped for a moment. Uh, providence is an activity that leads, directs the intelligence because it's the bestowal of good things upon the beings which are its objects. How it bestows those good things, then it can use the intelligence to map it out, to structure it, to design it, to order it, to make all the interrelationships. That's the function of the way the dream master creates the dream. And in communicating, in communicating the good that it does, and what makes good is the exercise of providence. And in each case, what does it do? Ah, it fills all with goodness. Every night, every dream, everyone has. That's what it's doing. See, so we have the idea of providence of God as a transcendental, transcendental function, a transcending function that doesn't grow down to the particular individual. But this kind of idea of providence does both. It transcends at the same time as very particular, particular in the most minute detail, yes. drawing upon the very particulars of one's life, bringing together in the most artful form with dramatic appeal. Look here, in, in uniting and bringing to a unity its objects, we see providence as a character of unity. Hey, unity. Hey, one, highest principle, Unity, it has the character of unity. Therefore, if it has the character of unity, that's next to the one. Therefore, the activity of unity is providence. And it leads the intelligence, directs the intelligence in the way in which it does for our own good. Therefore, all receive... In the, in the East, they talk a lot about kismet. Is that... Another name for this? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. As long as you keep both fu both transcendent function as well as its particular function that reaches down to our own everyday lives and brings us and demands and has a demanding quality as it give you, and if you don't pay any attention, it'll give you a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> you fool around, you don't pay any attention to your dreams. I'll tell you, come back and kick you. So we all receive from these real existences, their unity. And what do we get? See, uh, here's the key idea, which is very beautiful. I, I, I find very beautiful. See, the, each order, human order, right, has a share in the, in, in the presence of providence, proportional to our station and our capacity to receive it. To the degree that you're open to it, to the degree that you take on higher and higher challenges, <coughs> it, then your station changes and your capacity, therefore, to receive more of it than is an axiomatic fact for this system. Because it's there doing all the time what it does, and therefore, if you work with it, and understand it, you know what you're beginning to understand? The very mind of the dream master, metaphysically, which is to understand the mind of, the, of providence. Right? That's human intelligence, finally. I mean, understanding the language of dreams, finding a metaphysics in which you can understand it, so that it can give a vocabulary to understand what's going on, then we're understanding the very dynamics of the dream master's productions and understanding the master uh, the Dream Master's productions and what is going on and what principles are being used, we can understand that way the Master itself mm -hmm. in its productions. Not the Master directly, but through its productions. That's somewhat like understanding the painter through his paintings, but would you not agree there's a vast difference between the painter and his paintings? <coughs> so there is a higher mystery, but at least it lets us in on the art of the Master. And in that way, we can work together in our own destiny in bringing back a higher unity. So therefore, divine providence, what is it? It transcends beings and its objects, and yet it's coordinate. It's coordinate with them as a loving embrace irradiating goodness. Right? That's what it does. Right? Because it reaches down to us, it brings the better part of us together in a very lofty way, careful, attentive, and this idea, by the way, it's, this is a quote from Proclus, and uh, 
I happen to be a lover of Proclus and Plato. All right? That's what he calls providence then. As it manifests itself in our particular lives through, through the dream master then, we can see there's a loving embrace, that irradiating goodness, and that comes from providence itself, working on its two levels. So it may ensure the integrity of the universe, but more interestingly in our particular lives, it can attend to our own needs on a very particular and most important issue, which is coming to grips with your own soul and revealing what's most important to you for your own development. So that's my, my trip for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This comes, by the way, from Proclus's, uh, the metaphysics comes from Proclus's Elements of Theology. And it's uh, now out in paperback. It was difficult to buy at one time, and they've reissued it. And it's a magnificent work. It has 211 propositions. It's ordered like a work of geometry. Every step in it fits together in a magnificent whole, all the pieces interrelated. And, um, and I've left out a lot, but that's why we probably have another week. So, shall we play? What questions do you have? Thank you, first of all, for sharing you. your dream. Thank I you. Really appreciate you, it. You have a nightmare, though. <laughs> 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 that's what I was <laughs> no, see, the, this is rather curious. You know, Proclus is so interesting. You know, people have a picture of him being a great metaphysician, but the language he uses is all is, is uh, human, loving embrace, irradiating goodness, coordinate, going down, understanding, grasping. It's a very great system. It's a, uh, uh, probably one of the richest, most profound philosophers of Europe, and no one studies him. <laughs> you, can't, you can't find him taught anywhere in Southern California, California, the West Coast. You have to go all the way to Nova Scotia. I think that's the only university that teaches it in Nova Scotia. I've never said that. Hmm? That's almost a very sad commentary on our educational system. Oh, it is. Um, oh, uh, oh, I don't mind knocking it. Oh, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never, and I was, uh, took all those heavy duty courses, philosophy yeah. and whatever, yeah. and I never was introduced to this man. Oh yeah, this is, this. yeah, it's very, very beautiful, and uh, he's got other works that go along with it. Very sublime. Oh yeah. I'm so human. I yeah, yeah. Loving yeah, that's right. Oh. Very true, very lovely. I better stop talking about Proclus. We'll be going on for a while. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank your attending, you. and I especially enjoy sharing this with you.